Hey guys, so today we're gonna be talking about the nervous system, you know, all the fun stuff with your brain. So, um, the nervous system is a very important body system or um, system of organs. It interacts with sensory and internal body systems to coordinate responses, behaviors such as movement, metabolism, and respiration, very important things, which is why if you have a loss of function of your nervous system, it can be very severe, including change in behavior, loss of bodily functions, or even death, it's very bad. Nervous system is very important. Okay, so we have divided it up into two different types, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes your brain and your spinal cord. So your brain and your spinal cord, think of it as like the center of everything. And the peripheral nervous system is just your nerves and your ganglia, so other uh, nervous system cells. And it's gonna connect your central nervous system to your limbs and your organs. So it can send signals to tell those things what to do. All right, so we talked about those basics. Let's talk about the basic functional unit of our nervous system, which is our oops, neuron. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. Good. Um, so we've noticed that neurons can show how parts of our nervous system are evolutionary conserved um, over many different species because they're the same pretty much in all animals. So again, the neuron is the basic structure of the nervous system, and this is our neuron, which you've probably seen before. So our cell body or our soma is the central part of our neuron. It's got the nucleus inside there. And then we have these branchy looking things. Those are our dendrites and those are going to receive signals from other neurons. We have our axon here, which will send signals down the cell and they're surrounded by what we call Schwann cells to create a myelin sheath. And this is going to, uh, we'll talk about the uh, function of that later. And then of course we have our axon terminal. This is where the signal leaves. Um, and our nodes of Ranvier or nodes of Ranvier um, are going to be where we are not covered by our myelin sheath. They're not surrounded by Schwann cells. Okay, so again, our myelin sheath acts as an electrical insulator. Remember, we're sending signals down the cell, so we need to be able to make sure that it um, basically can send a signal. And the nodes of Rambier are going to be gaps in the myelination of the axons, and again, that is where the signal is sent through uh, down the cell. Our synaptic terminal is going to be the end of the axon containing the vesicles with our neurotransmitters. And we'll talk about what neurotransmitters are in just a moment. The other parts you can uh, see in our notes or in our other activities for their functions as well. All right, so let's talk about, uh, yeah, let's talk about this one. Action potentials, okay. So action pot potentials propagate impulses along neurons. So this is how our signal is sent down the nervous system that cell, the neuron. Okay, so we're measuring this particular graph in voltage over here, milliseconds over here, so we have millivolts and milliseconds. Again, this happens very, very fast. You notice this entire process only takes five milliseconds to go from resting membrane potential to return to other resting membrane potential. Do you need the space? Um, I'm sure it's okay, go ahead. Okay, so in an action potential, the membranes will be polarized. Um, so we start here at resting membrane potential. An action potential is an all or nothing kind of thing. We're either gonna have the entire jump or we are not gonna have anything at all. Um, so think about it like a gun fired. We're either gonna have the shot or we're not gonna have a little bit. We're not gonna have a trickle of sodium ions flowing in. It'll be all the sodium ions at once and um, all the potassium ions going out. So what happens is when we get our action potential, we'll have this jump here. And so jump in voltage means that our sodium and potassium channels are gonna open and the membranes are locally depolarized. So um, all of a sudden we have this huge jump in millivolts here and the sodium ions are gonna flow in, the potassium ions are gonna flow out. And then we have what's called the refractory period here. We have to get back to our normal resting membrane potential. And at this point, we cannot have another action potential. So think about like loading the gun again. You can't shoot again until everything's returned to normal. And so the sodium and, potass sodium and potassium pumps um, through ATP are gonna work to maintain this membrane potential. Okay. So we'll talk more about action potentials later. Let's talk about how exactly these signals are transmitted. So the transmission of information between neurons occurs across what we call synapses. And these are these special little gaps in between two neurons, two nervous system cells. And so the transmission across the synapses is going to involve these special chemicals we call neurotransmitters. And I'm sure you've heard of some of these before. These are things like dopamine, serotonin, and epinephrine. And if their receptors are blocked, sometimes we have different responses in the body. And that's what some drugs do. But the tra transmission of a neurotransmitter is going to result in a response, either inhibitory or stimulatory. So it's either going to stop something or increase something. 
And so in the next video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the vertebrate brain and how the brain controls some of this and how it all interacts together. But that was a quick and dirty look at the nervous system. Okay, thanks.